Hello, uh, welcome to uh, Director Maria Schneider and star Dan Stevens of I'm Your Man, um, which is the official German entry for the Oscars. Congratulations. Debuted in Berlin. I wish I'd seen it there. I love Berlin, um, but I had I wasn't there this year. Um, was it was it live? Was it uh, uh, like a real festival? Yeah, it was. A, it was very different from all the other Berlin festivals because it was only open air venues. And um, and they installed beautiful place uh, right at the Pergamon Museum, actually, which is one of our main locations. So it was it was bizarre because you could see the museum behind the screen and on the screen. It was uh, it was very unique. It was a beautiful and first public experience after COVID or during COVID for me. I just want to dive into a little bit, um, Maria, of your, uh, before we get to the movie, of, of your background. Um, you were an actress for, for many years and turned to uh, becoming a director. Talk a little bit about, about why you, you did that. Uh, I'm, I'm curious. Well, I always wanted to be a stage actress when I started out. And then I, my entry into the film work was uh, with writing and developing projects and the first roles I placed in movies were basically written by myself. So uh, I was always interested in the behind the camera work and I co-directed before and then I did my own feature film in 2007 in, in Israel. I am still an actress and I'm very grateful not to be forced to decide which way to go. And I'm still on the stage, I'm still in front of the camera and I'm behind of the camera and, uh, and I find it very luxurious and beautiful. <laughs> I'm glad you are. So tell me how um, you you came to find Dan Stevens. I would also call it a win in the lottery. I think because <laughs> the, we wanted so much. We wanted such this this uh, this beautiful man, uh, capable of uh, speaking very complicated German, but not being German, bringing a taste of strangeness to the character and uh, and then just the most gifted actor so yeah we looked around a lot and uh, and then I was so very happy to to meet Dan like we are meeting now via zoom so Dan at what young age did you become proficient in German we had some family friends who lived in Germany and we used to vacation uh, we'd take road trips from England through Europe to Germany quite often and then the opportunity came up at school to start learning it. And the choice was between Spanish and German and uh, all the cool kids were doing Spanish. So I thought I'd be weird and do German. And, um, <laughs> and I'm very happy that I did. Um, and I kept it up and, and, and I even studied a little German literature uh, as part of my English literature degree. And uh, I did, I actually did a movie in Germany about 13 years ago, playing an Englishman who spoke German in a biopic of Hildegard Kneif, uh, which was very much a German release it didn't have the, the sort of international journey that that this film has had um and I, I yes i wondered if i'd ever work there again and i was so happy to to you know receive this script uh, in the in the middle of a, a pandemic you know and and to be able to chat with maria like this and and um it was it was delightful maria i'm i'm curious you're you're on the zoom with dan and you're kind of p pitching him a little bit your 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 character that he's going to play what what did she say to you uh, how did she how did she pitch it to you well first of all the, the meeting was in german and i was very very nervous to be interviewed or, or to have this sort of meeting in german because that that hasn't happened to me for for a long time and it really felt like a some sort of school test <laughs> Um, and, but it was, I, I hope it was, it was quickly apparent that I could, you know, at least hold my own in, in German, but the real question was whether I could deliver this very complex German, uh, which I think even for a German actor is, is, you know, it's quite tricky. I, I suppose there's certain scenes, particularly early on where Tom is, is delivering very complex German very, very quickly. And it's just sort of inappropriate, it, it, it's inappropriate German for the, for the context. And, and it's just odd you know, it, it's just odd German <laughs> for, for anybody to be speaking. And um, and I think the assurance that Maria wanted was that I could learn this this stuff and deliver it at speed. And uh, of course, I said yes. And then immediately hung up and thought, oh, God, what have I done? Um, I have to go and learn this stuff now. Um, 
but uh, it was it was challenging uh, for, for as I say for for anybody. But I think for a for a foreign actor, you know, coming in and speaking that stuff, it was uh, it was tricky. But what I remember from our from our first meeting was a was a real a sort of meeting of minds in terms of what I had got out of the screenplay was this very curious, sweet, delightful, also quite weird, funny, um, and very profound story that, you know, all of these things sort of mixed in, um, which I was very happy to, that I translated accurately, <laughs> that this was what Maria and Jan had, had intended with their screenplay. I was looking, I was thinking about all the AI uh, movies, you know, I mean, you, you have Ex Machina or, or AI itself or 2001 even, you know, Hal. Were you influenced at all uh, by, by any of these, you know, Blade Runner? Yes. I mean, I, I think that the distinction with Tom, unlike some of those, although Blade Runner is, is a good example, but where he's an android who's very much wanting to be human and to improve. And so it's not like, you know, C-3PO or something who, who just sort of is what he is and, and that's what you're going to get and that's his character. But Tom is sort of constantly learning, recalibrating, evolving. So it's it, it he's never one thing. And that was, you know, for an actor, that was a very, very delicious challenge to kind of chart that that progress from something slightly more robotic and mechanical to something that is believably human. And so it, at each step of the way, it was something Marie and I talked a lot about was how to kind of grade that and, and how much of the, the robot and the human is, is being seen in any one moment. So I suppose I, I was aware of these other films and I'd certainly seen them, but I wasn't, I wasn't actively looking at them and going, okay, I'm going to do that. I think we were looking more at, at human models that Tom might look to emulate rather than looking at robotic models. Right. So actually, um, you know, we, we talked a lot about Cary Grant and Jimmy Stewart. And for some reason, these sort of screwball comedies um, kept coming up. And, and we looked a lot at just the physicality of Cary Grant and taking some of those mannerisms and just, you know, looking at odd scenes and thinking, okay, well, this is what Cary Grant does in this situation. How would that look if you sort of abstract that movement and put it almost in the wrong place. And so it was really about looking at the at the human influences rather than the the android influences. At the end of the day, it's uh, the movie is in fact more interested in the question what is it that makes us human than how does an android work or a gotcha. project. So uh, I think the character of Tom gives an echo and really tries hard to um, to to come across as human as possible. And then he meets. Uh, I'm a, the human who who asks this from him, who um, who tries to trigger, you know, um, imperfection because he's just perfect, and um, and so it was uh, it was an ongoing question of uh, in our dialogue between Dan and me, how much of the machine do we want to be still seen? Because the moment you're talking about love or you're starting to tell a rom-com, you, you actually want the audience to want the couple to come together. So the, the presence of the machine and the inhuman part of, of, of the robot is in the way, it's, it's always another obstacle. And so we tried that, we, that you basically never forget that he, he is not human. How did you figure out how to do that, Dan? What was your approach to, to the stiffness or, or the awkwardness of a, of, of a humanoid? Yes, I think that the physicality, oddly, was, was informed, well, certainly the early, more robotic physicality was, was actually influenced a lot by learning the rumba, um, which was something <laughs> that, even though it's the first sequence that we see, it was something we shot right at the end of the movie um, for various reasons, sort of crowd things and COVID and everything. But um, so all the, all the while that we were shooting the movie, any day off I had, I was going into the dance studio and learning this very difficult dance, very precise dance with a very, very strict German rumba teacher <laughs> and, <laughs> and whose, whose own physicality was, was a great influence, I think, on Tom. I mean, I remember Maria saying, wait till you meet this guy, his poise, his you know, he I mean, obviously a human, but but had a very kind of almost inhuman stance to it. You know, it was just so perfect, and uh, and his precision was uh, was really inspirational, um, both for learning the rumba, but also for this. You know, how how Tom might move initially, which I think loosened up as as the film went on. But um, I would say a lot of a lot of the physical, uh, you know, influence for Tom came from that. 
I think we talked about this in our first conversation already, right? We were yeah. talking about, is it interesting that we see the machine or is it just the agreement with the audience in the head? Dan Steven is a robot, but everything else is human. But then we had really fun with, for instance, separating language and physicality or have certain gestures come with a bit of a delay. Yeah. So you can, you can kind of see the choice, the algorithm is is making right at that very moment oh yes hand in the pocket hand yes. out of the pocket and sitting well, like down this, lean this back. is how a man stands in this moment you know it, it, yeah <laughs> or to sort of lean back you know just do, do, do sort of human things but in the wrong place um or slightly mistimed it was it was a lot of fun to kind of calibrate those yeah Doesn't as it? if tom would have seen all the Cary grant movies and the machine imitates the male behavior so <laughs> that was really, it was twisted and, and fun. Well, I love the idea that you're playing with here, that there is a possibility that the humanoid lover is going to be much more satisfying than the human lover would ever be. Um, I, I, I bought into that, actually. <laughs> so you weren't as skeptical as Alma is. <laughs> No, I was getting angry with her. I was, I was saying, <laughs> get on board. <laughs> <You know? laughs> she's, she. I loved, I loved the way you you presented her. She's a professional. She's a brainiac. She's had trouble with love, so she's resisting, which is always part of any romantic comedy. It, you, there has to be an obstacle. Yes, but she's also among the lucky ones who experienced human love, and so she's very demanding. And the thought to to get a substitute from a thing, a non-living thing, is uh, is something she despises from very early on. Is Tom um, uh, evolving into a feeling, emotional, human-like person? I think he's getting there. I mean, I, I don't know if he if he ever quite arrives at that, but. Um... I mean, that is one of the, you know, one of the things I'm delighted by this film is, is just how many of those big questions seem to fly at you after the film. And, and everyone I speak to seems to get get something else sort of quite profound out of it. And um, and I think one of the questions is, you know, what is alive? And, you know, at what point do we say, OK, Tom is now autonomous. You know, he is a, a feeling, thinking thing. Um, and I, I don't know if you know, if we quite arrive at that point, but certainly, you know, that's the question in Alma's mind and, and, and framing it so that Alma is really testing this experience rather than it's something that she actively wants and has acquired. It's like, okay, what do you think of this experience? You know, and, and, and that kind of leads us as, as human viewers into this conundrum. It's like, well, you know, what, what would we think of this? What do we think of this? And, and where is that going? I don't know. It's such I, yeah. a funny idea of plopping this man into your home for three weeks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to test. Is this our future? Is this where we're heading? I would say yes. I mean, I, I don't think any of us would be surprised if, if in a few months there was a headline that someone had developed this program. And, and you know, I think there are already um, kind of, I, I can't remember what they call them, but they're sort of chat bots that sit with old people in Japan and just they're sort of companion robots who can sort of hold basic conversation and, and just sort of you know, stop people being lonely. I think that's sort of, you know, an entry level version of, of what we've got here. Um, and I'm sure that will, that will continue. And I think, you know, if, if there's a world in which people want it, it, it will exist. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> we have the technology, I'm sure. Have you been surprised by the reactions to the film? Well, I've been delighted. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crowd pleaser. It's been sold in, I don't know, 80 countries. It seems to be a universal story. And uh, and my co-writer and I, we always thought about at the end of the day is about human loneliness. Uh, but it's also about another lonely creature. <laughs> I mean, Tom, Tom becomes... Even though we don't forget he's a machine, he becomes a lovable individual and a very unseen mixture of masculinity and naivety with a complete absence of sarcasm and egotism. And, uh, and that's something lovable, even though he, is, he doesn't know the difference of performing a feeling or having a feeling. And that is specifically for an actress, um, a fantastic and ongoing question is there a false tear is there 
a truth here. What's the difference between a stage and a reenactment or an ex- a true experience? What is truth? What is a true emotion? For an actor, it must have been very, very interesting to play around with what is acting. You had to find the true self of, of this creature. Yes, I mean, it was it was a huge challenge in, in so many ways, but also, yes, it was kind of, you know, stripping stripping things that would normally, you'd normally take for granted in a scene and kind of building them back in slowly um, so that you were really considering each interaction in, in quite a different way. And although it's sort of tapping into, I suppose, sort of classic, you know, classical myths, like you've got the sort of Frankenstein or Prometheus or, or um, you know, Pygmalion, um, but it also has something, I, I think this year particularly, the, the loneliness theme has really kind of struck a chord around the world with people and 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 has a sort of a universal feel to it but um but yes for 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 an actor to sort of um yes to sort of feel your way through a create a human rather than sort of pre-create this character this human character who you're going to introduce into a story to actually build the human in the screen um was a, was a unique delight uh, you did a beautiful job with it i have to say <laughs> i'm gonna very much yeah. say goodbye all right